Hello, 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 everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I am Jay Lee. This is Jay Lee's Corner. This is my review for the games people play, season one, episode three. Okay, if you have not done so already, please take a moment to subscribe to my channel. Okay, and become a whole Jay Bird. Jay Bird. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, and all that good shit. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe. Uh, what else? What else? Hit that bell to notify you when I have new videos up. Or, you know, all that good stuff. Go on down to that description box and start clicking shit, okay? Do all that. Anyway, <laughs> like, go click, click, click everything in the box. So, the episode came on, was yesterday? Yeah, it came on Tuesday. So, it came on yesterday. But, let's get into it. This is a really good show. I have to say that it keeps me interested. It's not boring yet. I'm not predicting much of story of story or whatever, but it's a good thing. So we see Nia and is it Nia or not? God dang it. I remember when I think it's Nia. We're gonna say Nia. We're not gonna say Nia. Anyway, we see Nia and MJ in her office or whatever. And the whole thing is where she's trying to figure out if she's gonna be fired or not. Because the whole story with the golden goddess and Marcus has been scooped and scrapped by someone else and so i can't i don't think she's gonna know who did it i mean her boss seems to i don't it's just we have to wait and see her boss comes in like you i think i figured out what happened with the story you went to school with marcus's wife vanessa right like you guys both played the same already you lying sisters or whatever oh um <laughs> yeah we were you know lying to sisters or whatever so she realized okay that's what happened. She figured it out or whatever. You lucky. We, they, like, from the same sorority. Because she also wants the same sorority. So, they're all sorority sisters. And she's like, you know, next time, just choose me. Okay? Next time, don't choose her ass. Even though, because you, you chose her once already. Next time, it could be me. And so, you know, she does not get fired. But, you know, she it was nervous the whole time. Think I'm going to lose my job. Get moved back to New York or wherever she's from. Um, and this won't work out. So she's on the phone talking to Eric, her boyfriend, you know, about what happened. Like, I just didn't think it was going to work out. Like, I was so scared or whatever. And he like, you know, well, don't worry about what happened or whatever. Because if things fail, you can always come home, come here. He like, that's sometimes people and places don't work out. He said, that's why I stayed behind in case you didn't make it. And you, things didn't work out, and you can come back here. She's like, so you were, like, planning for me to fail? He's like, no, I would just sound like, you know, something. She's like, no, like, you don't believe in me. And so now she's upset of what he said. You know what? I have to go. And then she hangs up the phone. I mean, you know, she just a little bit pissed off or whatever. And I'm like, well, I guess that's the reason to be pissed. But at the same time, it's also, it's also like... It don't mean he don't believe in you. It mean like, okay, let's see how it go. Because sometimes shit don't work out. It don't mean I did not believe in you. But, you know, you went and took the chance. And the thing didn't work. You know, we had something to bounce back on. But I get the way he said it seemed fucked up. Okay? Now we then see Kareem and Marcus at the house. And Kareem was telling Marcus how he found out that Jamal whole line ass was behind the whole shakedown thing. You know what I'm saying? He bring up all, you know, I can't believe he was lying or whatever. He had himself beat up, but he still had on the watch or whatever, blah, blah, blah. So, for the most part, they, like, you know, the bullshit over or whatnot. Um, but we know Jamal will be back eventually, okay, with his old ass. Anyway, Mark is like, I'm over. I'm, I'm over the bullshit or whatever he was saying. I don't owe nobody nothing. Like, I don't care about nobody coming after me. The only person who back I will always have is yours, Kareem, because you've always had my back. And we've always, or whatever. We've always said, you got my back, I got yours. And so, Kareem, like, cool me. I got you, bro. I got you. Matter of fact, if you need me to say something on behalf of you and, you and your own lady, my own girl, like, let me know. And he's like, yeah, man, thanks or whatever. He's like, man, you think, like, you think Vanessa did it? Like, what, killed old girl? He like, yeah, I mean, you think she did it? He like, I don't know. I, I, I can't ask her. No, nah, she didn't do that, man. I don't think. I'm like, nigga, that's your wife. You just say no all up and through. You know, now, as they're having this conversation, we see the cop who was investigating their girl's case. And he has her phone, and he keeps looking at her records. You know what I'm saying? He keeps looking at the records or whatever, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find her killer, okay? And we see the last call on her call lock, 
is to Marcus. Okay, either to Marcus or from Marcus. One of the two. Okay, but she, that's the last phone call was to, to a phone register in Marcus's name. Okay, I'm like, it's going to be some bullshit. Okay, we then see like the PR rep for the team come see Marcus. Okay, well, come see Marcus and Vanessa. And she's played by Sheree Fletcher, who is Will Smith's ex-wife okay we've seen her before she's been on a couple of shows but not but she plays this person and you know for the most part she's like well yeah you know what's being investigated or whatever we have someone on it who's gonna let us know like piece by piece what they're figuring out um and you know with the team is on your side so don't worry about it you know what i'm saying everyone cheats it's not a big deal if you cheated with her and that's like if you have to her like one time he's like well no well like two times he's like no and she's like well, th- well how many how many times it was and Vanessa like I don't need to hear about how many times you cheated on me like I don't need to hear that bullshit or whatever you know what I'm saying is I don't care and then he goes straight faster because that's well you know Will Smith's ex-wife well you know people cheat people die it's not not the big of a deal yes it is like dying and cheating should not go hand in hand I mean I, if she meant like a person can cheat and it don't mean the person that cheated with died on their hands I get that but she said a little bit different and as she talked Vanessa was like are you here to protect the league or us? Well, protecting the league does protect you. And I was like, bullshit. Mm-mm. Sun may ride in the water. Okay. We then see little Katie. Okay, little Katie Kyle. I'm like, her daddy would be so proud of her. Not really. Okay. Little Layla. That's her name on the show. But she was with Katie from Marvin Kids Forever. Um, she out there in the music video. Twerking. Just just bent over, ass twerking, and that's it. And a little bathing suit or whatever. And it's a fellow twerker who happens to be an Asian woman, okay? Who is a, she's a fellow twerker. And they both have that same white woman pimp representative who books them for stuff like that, okay? And then, you know, the new little Asian woman, okay, says, you know what? We begin book for all kind of events or whatever. You should work this event with me. Like, it's $2,000 a piece or whatever. And now they want is some cute girls for the party. And I'm like, that don't sound right. It don't sound right at all. But, you know what I'm saying? Katie wants to go anyway. So, Katie goes to this party. And she gets in the car with, you know what I'm saying, um, Agent Spice, because I don't know what her name is. <laughs> and so, where are we going? Girl, I don't know. We, you know, we get an address. We go there, whatever. It's a driver, whatever. Like, it's all kind of, we figured out as we go. I'm like, how the fuck you going somewhere and you don't know where or to meet with who? That's how they make sex slaves. Sex, sex slaves. Because you get in a car going to a strange place with people you don't know. And next thing you know, you are a sex slave or a murder victim. You don't do that. Okay, that's just stupidity. That's the definition of it's about to be some bullshit. But I digress. They go on a little trip. Now they get to a party and they get to the party and she like, "Where are what what kind of party is this? What's going on?" It's people everywhere. It's dudes and it's chicks. You see people smoking weed, popping pills, drinking, uh doing cocaine. I'm like, "See, look, I don't want to be at no party where they doing too much. There's too much going on. Like, they not even on one drug." Like, like, I can't do that. It's team too much. And so, you know, I'm like, it looked like it's about to be some bullshit. And as they're walking through, the dude's looking like, oh, yeah, I want that one. I want that one. And I'm like, girl, you don't feel uncomfortable yet? Girl, figure it out. It, the party just looks trashy. The girls look trashy. The dudes look even trashier. And I'm like, it's about to be some bullshit. So, they then, they've been there for some hours. They have to be there for at least six hours to get paid. So, they got like 45 minutes left. So, they notice the guys and girls, like, kind of mingling, whatever, but the guys giving girls, like, a stack of cash, and then the guy and the girl walk away. I'm like, first of all, that's called a prostitutional uh, transaction. A prostitutial. It's not a real word, but I made it up. Okay, I'm my like, girl, mm-mm, don't do it, mm don't do it. And they look like, that's a lot of money, like, what's going on? So, as they're sitting there, one dude come up, my boss likes you a lot. And it was, like, Nigerian dudes, okay? Nigerian or African dudes, and I'm my like, girl, mm my boss wants to see you. He thinks you're the most attractive person here, or whatever, and when he come, when he gets here, you can welcome him back. Meaning, give him some kind of sexual will favor and she's like nah we good we not hookers like we didn't come in for that he's like what that's not we said with your manager no that's that wait here wait here 
Okay. And then he walks away. And he's like, girl, what is going on? And then he talking to the other dudes or whatever. And then all the dudes just start walking away. I'm like, see, they about to go get the sex slave toys. Girl, get out of there. Run. Run, bitch, run. But they sat there. I said, y'all stupid. Mm-mm. They left too weirdly. They left. Too, I would have been leaving right with them. Like, y'all leaving? So I'm like, gotta go. I will see you when I see you. Okay? But that ain't what happened. They just sat there. So we then see Vanessa and Nia and Naya meet up again. And they haven't met up since um, she told her, hey, I'm going to be running a story with that girl or whatever. So they haven't talked since then. So they both realize they're not mad at the other one. Nia Naya understands that the reason that Vanessa, you know, scooped her story and hired old boy to say it was his body and not Marcus because I couldn't let my husband be left, left out in the cold. And Vanessa understands that Nia Naya had to possibly run the story because that's her job. So they both understand what, what the, the reason the other one had to do what they did. And it's no hard feelings. So Vanessa, like, you know, it's just so much going on. Like, I just can not take it, girl. I got one girl all on social media after my husband and another girl, you know what I'm saying, coming at me from the grave. Oh, you mean the dead girl? Well, who else she mean? Who else from the grave? Come on, I need a night. Girl, don't be dumb. Anyway, so um, she's like, you know, people think I killed her. Like, it's just kind of crazy. Even though I did fight her, but I didn't, you know, they think I actually killed her. And, you know, I just don't get it. So, I fought her because I caught her and Marcus in bed or whatever. And it's kind of crazy. I just don't know what to do. Girl, you need some help. Like, you and me, if you need some help, let me know. You know what I do? Like, do you still talk to Terrence? Girl, do I talk to Terrence? Girl, you know, sometimes... What you need? Now, Terrence is me and Naya's ex-boyfriend, okay? And, you know, so Vanessa, like, you know, if you can just contact him or whatever, meet up with him and, like, see if he can help me, like, just kind of guide me through all this stuff or whatever. I just need you to reach out to him or whatever to see if he can help with this dead girl investigation, okay? And I'm like, okay. So, Nia, like, I girl, I reach out. I say, ooh, girl, she wants to fuck Terrence, okay? Nia, Naya, and Terrence ain't over. I can tell it by the smile on her face. So, Nia, Naya does meet up with Terrence. And Terrence is a nice black man. No, I ain't no pictures. Okay. And then, couldn't find out Terrence is a cop. And so, the reason that Vanessa wanted his help was so that he can tell her, like, kind of what to expect within the investigation without her being connected to the, the league, you know, people or whatever, or the actual cops. Okay, because like she said, I don't trust the cops, and I don't trust the league has our best interest at heart. And I damn sure can't trust Marcus to tell me no truth, okay? It's going to be some bullshit if I ever seen it, okay? And so, he's like, you know what? She needs help or whatever Vanessa does. Yeah, like, can you help her? She just needs someone to, like, guide her through this. You know what I'm saying? Please, Terrence. And Terrence's like, you know what, girl? I got you. So, I got her. I say, mm, mm, mm. He trying to have some sex. Anyway, you know, he then see, you know what I'm saying, little, little Katie Kyle, uh, Layla, and Asian Layla, as I'm going to call her right now, is still at the party. Now, the guys are gone. It looks like it's a few girls, like, laid around somewhere high or drunk or whatever. Um, But they're like, you know, man, we need to leave. Not to get my money. Because you said the house always win. And we the house. And we ain't one of the, I want my money. So, Layla is out up here looking in all the drawers and all the cabinets. Opening up stuff. Trying to find, she found a little bit of weed here. A little bit of weed there. But she's trying to at least find, like, something that would be worth some money to them. But she couldn't find nothing, okay? And so she calls room service because they had this big villa. So she calls the room service thing or whatever. Can I have your best champagne, like the best expensive champagne, you know, delivered? What are you doing? What are you doing? Girl, we need to make some money. Shut up, okay? Sure. How many, how many, you know, how many bottles do you need? Um, Four cases. First of all, that has to be a fancy ass trusting hotel to send up four cases of the most expensive champagne because some girls said to do so well, girl, that's why you can't let nobody be in your room and run the, run the tab don't do that don't do that so her thing is we're gonna get this expensive ass champagne because it's exp i'm not gonna do thirsty how will you get out the hotel that's what i was confused about but we see, like, it's now with daylight outside, and now they have a car. Where they get a car from? Where they take an Uber there? I have no idea. I, I don't. I don't. Know if they rented one. If I don't. I don't know. 
I was very confused about the car. But, you know, plot holes all up and through. And so they have the four cases of the, the expensive champagne loaded into the car. And as they're trying to leave in a her, 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 just a little expensive ass champagne, some dudes see them. Oh, my God, stop them. And they pull off. It's like roll one and a coyote. Pew! You know what I'm saying? Anyway, she and Asian, uh, her, because I don't think what the girl name is, are, like, driving around. They found, like, a little hillbilly type, cowboy type, weird little little rest area with like an old man in the cowboy hat or whatever sitting around. And they up and taking pictures and taking selfies or whatever. The white pimp lady calling and she like, don't ask the phone girl, leave it alone. I'm like, the white pimp calling y'all because the black Nigerians and told them y'all stole some shit. They looking for y'all, okay? They looking for y'all. But you know what I'm saying? Little dumbass lady like, don't ask the phone girl, we good, like we made it. We won, the house won, the house lost. Okay, you got you got to now sell the fucking champagne. Anyway, so later they say, you know what? Let's make an IG video. So she proposing it with the champagne or whatever. Oh, it's lit! It's lit! This is the that. And the Niger the Nigerians who stuff she didn't stole is oh that's her right there. That's the golden goddess. That she's the one who took the champagne. I'm looking like. Is it really champagne? Because y'all can't be friends with some goddamn champagne. I'm, I, girl, I don't know. Anyway, they re not, they now know who she is and stuff like that. Because at the hotel, they didn't really know who she was. So, again, she was just a higher hooker. Or non-hooker or whatever. So, we see that. Okay? We see that. Now, we do see Marcus and Vanessa there in counseling. Okay? They had been in counseling the whole episode. But it was cut and pasted in parts. And I got to talk about the bullshit. So, you know, for the most part, you know, she's like, all I do is smile. I smile here, I will smile there, I will smile everywhere. And now it's hard for me to smile. And she look over at Marcus, though, cheating ass. And I'm like, because he ain't shit, okay? And she's like, you know, my husband betrayed our marriage or whatever. And you know what I'm saying? I just don't know what to do. I just want to be happy. I want to be happy. And sometimes I feel like maybe he doesn't want me anymore. Like maybe I'm just not what he wants anymore. Baby, you don't say that. Okay? I want you. Of course I want you. Why wouldn't I want you? I love you. Honey, I love you. Is this love, Marcus? No, it's not. And Marcus and I should know that. Okay? Marcus, you out here fucking on everybody else but your wife. Okay? And the bad part is after you saw the dumb golden goddess girl taking pictures of your body... You kept going back for more coochie. Just stupid, okay? So at this part, the pastor tells Marcus, you have to fight for your marriage. You, know what I'm you have to fight for your marriage and rebuild the trust because you don't do that. It will be doomed. And he goes, and Vanessa's like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He says, and Vanessa, you know what I'm saying? You know, you have to also, you know, be patient and be willing to forgive as well. You know what I'm saying? Y'all need to can be communicating, talking more. He don't communicate. He don't talk at all. Okay. It's like talking to it's like a brick wall. He was like, I'm like a whole detective in my house. I have to ask a thousand questions or whatever. He do not communicate right. All he do is like, mm-hmm, and fold his arms. And what he did, say, mm, -hmm, whatever, and folded his arms. I'm like, girl, the fuck by. So we see a little scene with Kareem. Kareem went to see his mama played by Vanessa Bell Calloway. Mainly because Jamal working with some dude, some basketball kid in the old city. And, you know, Kareem used to be playing ball or whatever. And, and Jamal messed his stuff up or whatnot. So, he goes to his mom or whatever. Like, mom, can you get me in touch with so-and-so and so-and-so? It's the kid who who we, um, who Jamal uh, played ball. Who's, he's coaching or whatever. So, he out there playing ball with the dude, okay? And then Jamal walk up like, Lewis. What are you doing, Lewis? And Jamal like, man, let me, yeah, what the fuck you doing? So Lewis, the prospect, is like, man, no, I'm just playing ball with old dude or whatever. Don't, you, know, you don't do that. And so Marcus is, it's not Marcus, girl, Jesus. Kareem and Jamal arguing back and forth, back and forth, arguing whatever, because Jamal feel like Kareem shouldn't be there, ain't got a reason to be there, whatever. Kind of, I own him. I work with him, leave him be. And then Kareem like, you don't own him. He can do whatever he want to do. You know what I'm saying? And then Kareem's ex girlfriend, who look like she's still in the hood. Okay, she came up with bamboo earrings, everything. Go ahead on somewhere, Jamal, because you fucked up his career the whole time. He would have been great, and it wasn't for you. Which makes the prospect do? You know what, Coach? I need some time to think. I'll talk to you later. So he ain't going to work with Jamal too much, okay? And go on somewhere, Jamal. Get from out of here. 
I guess she was Captain Sazam. And not Kermit. Oh, girl, I should have always been with me, girl. Hey, how you doing? What you doing, girl? You need to ride somewhere? And the next thing we know, her and Kareem in the back of his truck, I mean, fucking, okay? She riding him, and he said, choke me harder. I said, oh, Kareem not getting choked. Hey, Kareem, and all that kind of stuff. And I'm like, that is a very, very, very real sex scene. They do real looking sex scenes on this thing. Because when, 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 um... Marcus was messing with Layla, Lil Katie, or whatever. They had a real hidden from the back scene. And this was a real, I'm riding you, and dudes like getting choked, I'm choking you, or whatever. I don't know I'm smiling. But you know what I'm saying? It was, it was a real looking scene. I, I know from experience. Anyway, so, you know, they out there having sex. Girl, I miss you. I, you oh, you ain't changed a bit. I see she had it. Because she fucking you in the back of your car like y'all kids, okay? But I digress. Now, the end of it. You know, they're back in counseling or whatever, and Marcus is finally, like, he's, now he's talking. And, you know, he brings up how people don't get how much pressure he's under and how sometimes he do dumb shit because he's just so stressed out because the pressure of what people expect from him that's on his shoulders or whatever. You know, he brings up how no one understands what I'm saying. Um, you know, everyone expects me to be a good player, to make all the shots. If I miss shots, the team loses and the whole team was counting on me or whatever, you know. People only want to be around me for what I can do for them. My my marriage is failing. I'm, I'm failing my wife. Okay, I messed up my marriage. You know what I'm saying my wife. I'm always disappointing her, whatever. And all I really care about is her happiness. I just want to be her. I want her to be happy. I want to be happy. Okay, you know what I'm saying. And yes, I get distracted. I be out there in these streets, and I do get distracted. And I'm sorry. You know what I'm saying it's not right, and I'll do better. It sounds good. It also sounds like some bullshit. But, I mean, I'm going to say what was. Um, at least he's acknowledging. Because sometimes... Oh, my God. I mean, let me be nice. Sometimes a person can get do dumb shit because they are overwhelmed. And they're trying to take their minds off the overwhelmingness of it. But, however, you can't you can't cheat when you have a wife. You know what I'm saying? You can't, you can't, be, you can't keep cheating. Okay. But for the most part, him finally being honest and talking to her and communicating what is causing him to do dumb shit makes her realize, oh, he ain't just out here cheating as he wants. Like, because he, you know, he just don't want me. He's just trying to distract himself from all that's going on in his life. You know, I got a wife, a kid, a house, a new, new team, new people, new this and that. Old, old dead girl, like, it's all what's going on. Anyway, you know, um... She hold his hand and smile at him. So Vanessa not done with him yet, okay? We then see Nia, and she's still out drinking with Terrence. Stop there sitting and drink with that man. And she know she got a man. She know she should be at home. But she's still just sitting and drinking or whatever. And then meanwhile, her man called her phone, and she sends him the voicemail. And Terrence say, let's have one more round of drinks. Okay, just one more round. All right, Terrence, just one more round. Girl, don't you fuck that man. Don't you do it. Don't you do it. And then we see Layla's finally at home, okay? She's finally at home with that champagne. And she up here hitting up Marcus. Like, you like champagne? I said, you old thought pocket bitch, okay? And he say, I'm married. I love my wife. I'm don't you leave me long. Boy, don't nobody want you. I want to know if you want to buy some champagne for me or whatever. I don't want you. Because you can buy it all. And when he said, oh, all right, but don't forget, I'm don't you. Nigga, if you want some champagne... Go to the store. Okay, you can. Or, I ordered Ciroc. Y'all know I ordered Ciroc online. I had it delivered to me. I had wine sent and delivered to me. If he wants some wine, you can get it from someone else besides the mistress who was trying to sell the story to the tabloids. Marcus, you're stupid. You, is, is your beard? Is the beard making you dumb? Is it the Beijing and your beard is making you a, 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 a better idiot? I don't know. Anyway. Um, at this point in time, she makes a little IG video. Like, oh, you know how the day can start off crazy, but it ends on a great, great, great note. You know, I'm just loving life. Or whatever she said, a positive little post or whatever. And then all of a sudden, everybody liking her post. Like, 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 like. Oh, my God, they like me. They really like me. I'm my like, girl, you too old for that. Why don't you not you young? Anyway. In between them likes, you see two messages that said, you know what I'm saying, you know, we know who you are, and you have something that doesn't belong to you. I'm like, girl, you don't see the messages? You don't see that? Check your shit, girl. Check your shit. Them Nigerians gonna be on that ass. On that ass. How, that may be, girl, she might be next one to die. Anyway, 
that was the review of the whole show. I am Jane Lee. This is Jane Lee's Corner. Do not forget to like, comment, subscribe, share, you know, all that good stuff. Follow me on, on IG. Look in the description box for all that information, okay? Because I'm done. Mm. Mm.